Attention. Welcome back everyone. It is Captain Foley and it's time for another Eagle Moss product review. Today we're going to be looking at something I've been waiting for for a little while. Glad it finally came. If you watched my um, January Eagle Moss uh, delivery video, you would have seen it already. Um, but this is one that I've been definitely waiting for. Sadly, I didn't get the magazine for it though. Uh, apparently there's an issue with North American magazines for these, um, so it, I didn't get that shipped. I'm um, still waiting on that from my Eagle Moss representative uh, when it does come in. Um, so I can't look at the magazine with you guys today, but we will be looking at the model and uh, discussing it a little bit. And that of course is the Disco Prize, the Discovery Enterprise uh, from last episode of Discovery Season 1 and going to be in season two. So let's take a look at this thing. This thing was designed by John Eves. And uh, <clears throat> first thing that should be pointed out is the box. It is not the Discovery box. Uh, it's not part of the Discovery series. This is part of the regular Eagle Moss XL series. So it's in a standard XL box. It's got the Star Trek logo on the side there and all the other ones on this end. So no, there's actually no Star Trek Discovery logo on this entire box. Uh, it just says Star Trek Discovery right there, so that's a thing that happened, um, <clears throat> but let's take a look. There she is, and let's hold it all snug in there. Discovery Enterprise, as designed by John Eves and Scott Snyder. Um, again, it's a fantastic ship. It's really beautiful. Um, it does capture the feel of the Enterprise. Um, more of a refit style, though, because of these struts, but um, very well done. Um, Got to give them kudos for the amount of work that they put into it and the way they made it look. Um, so, there you go. Um, <clears throat> now I have had this out of the box. Um, I took it out and this one nacelle was bent down funny. Uh, I went to readjust it and it popped right out of the socket. Um, so I have since added some crazy glue to each side because the other side was loose as well. So be careful of the engines where they attach to the struts. It's actually like a little bit of a gap there now but in order to have it straight and lined up with the other one I needed to do that so I just used regular CA glue or as you guys probably know it was crazy glue um, just one or two drops in there and um, made sure they were nice and level because I do like my nacelles to be straight and level so um, I usually don't do any repairs like that before the review because I want to show you guys, but I just wanted to make sure you guys knew that this one nacelle was a little bit tilted down at the back and this one was loose. Um, so, and they do pop off really easily. Uh, they also go on easily, but they don't fit snugly, so they're very wobbly. That's why I had to glue them. Uh, so, sometimes, usually I just snug them on and that's good enough, but not with this one, unfortunately. Now, so it's got a much squatter profile than the TOS Enterprise that we all know and love. Um, but yeah, there you go. I'm going to try something new actually with this review, which I'm going to do right now. I'm going to switch the camera angle so that I can zoom in on things while I'm talking to you about it and uh, kind of change the way I do this, do the review. I don't know if it's going to work. This is the first time for it, but I really want to show you this thing in a lot of detail. So let's give that a try right now, shall we? So we're going to give this a try where I take a closer look at it as I talk about it instead of putting up pictures. Um, see how this works. Uh, so if you get up close, you got some great aztec de detail there. A um, little bit of a error on the, on the registry there. The C is missing some paint. Not a big deal. 
but the Aztec is really cool. It's got some nice uh, indentations there for the RCS thrusters. Uh, also the windows on the side there. Um, I don't know if they're supposed to be painted or... It's hard to tell. Um, but anyway, so have got the black bars on the side because this is a cage era Connie, so it has those black bars on the saucer. Uh, you can see the little very tinily painted navigation lights. That one's green. This one over here is red. You got the phaser turrets. There's the front of the bridge. Uh, no window. It's uh, got that that part. Now I know that it's a transparent aluminum kind of thing that can be made to look solid. So there's a little detail right there, which is kind of uh, put in. But so yeah, um, no window, which is nice. They also toned down this the stepping here with this lighting. Um, it's not as prominent as it was in the show. Um, so there's the, the bridge module and the windows at the side. The larger impulse deck with the little Excelsior style little fins there. There's the bottom, the registries, the way they're supposed to be, which is cool. Uh, you can see the photon torpedo launchers there. Um, the windows look like they are supposed to be painted, um, so they're indented and the paint is actually misaligned. I do like the addition of the phasers here though, right in the dome. That's actually very, very, very cool. Got the three dots at the front. Same kind of style windows as the TOS Enterprise. It's got the cargo door or something there, very similar to the refit. That's an odd paint detail. Not sure what that's all about. And is this supposed to be a an airlock? It would work fine if it was, for sure. No issues with that, but it's on both sides. So are those cargo doors. Now, let's move into the... Uh, sorry about this, guys. This is a new method that I'm trying, so let's see how this works. There's the impulse deck. Um, you can see the separated impulse engines and the, the detail in the middle, which is an airlock. So that's very cool. Um, nothing really to point out on the bottom here, the saucer. the deflector. Uh, again, the, the little point is not as long as it is on John's concept sketches. They shorten that up quite a bit. I don't know if it was just for the model or for the actual show itself. Um, but it's a nice copper color. Um, the pennant on the side is really nice, really nicely done. The neck has got some window detailing, which doesn't have insets, so they're not misaligned or anything, which is nice. Uh, same with the secondary hull. It's got some nice aztec and paint color, uh, paint coloring here. Um, but you can see some of the windows are misaligned on the secondary hull, which is a bit of a shame. you got the standard shapes down here from a TOS Enterprise. They're just not colored yellow or outlined in black or red. So that's neat. Uh, struts, again I would have preferred they be straight, but the, the angled looks nice. Um, don't get me wrong, I like angled stru struts, but now you can see where I, I blued it. The inner part of the Strut maintains that kind of TOS vibe with these four segments. 
the choice of the cutout was an odd choice, but there's reasoning behind it, I'm sure. Some great detailing on the top of the, of the secondary hull. Now the shuttle bay, let me zoom in on that. Shuttle bay's got some interesting details as well. So that's very cool. It's even got the, the lighting right there for the landing, landing lights. The nacelles, both nacelle and caps, they're very similar to the ones they used on the XL TOS Enterprise, um, which on mine had two different colors. These ones are very similar in color. There's no real differentiation there, so that's nice. Um, front of the nacelle looks very NX style, but it's a nice tie-in between NX and TOS. banner and the registry on the side looks really good. This part is very reminiscent of the JJ Enterprise, the one designed by Ryan Church. The rear of the nacelle kind of has that same kind of vibe to it. I kind of like the addition of the fins on the bottom of the nacelle. It's kind of a neat addition in my opinion. Still maintains the TOS look of the lower part of the uh, forward nacelle with that coloration, that darker gray coloration, which is neat. Um, the rear end caps compared to the TOS Enterprise, these are very elongated and they fit with the design style. I like too that there's no balls in there, that there are the little dots, which is very reminiscent of how we saw it in uh, Where No Man Has Gone Before, the second pilot, uh, where it had the just little holes, little dots there instead of the ball, the half, the semicircle that we got in the rest of the production run. But that's cool that that's tied in there. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, essentially, there you have it, guys. The Disco Prize, the Discovery Enterprise. Um, from Eagle Moss. Great ship. Perfect remastered Enterprise would have been good for uh, the JJ movies. But as far as a prime Enterprise, uh, I have my reservations, but you all know about that. So, oh, even the eyebrows here, the eyebrows are present. They're the right color. They're not as long as the original TOS ones, which is fine with me, but as long as they maintain that look, uh, that's cool. Um, so yeah, there you have it guys, the uh, Discovery Enterprise. We're just going to throw it on the stand now, do a quick look around of it, and uh, see how this style of review has gone. Um, but anyway, let's go throw it on the stand. All right, guys, so here she is on the stand, looking really good. Um, does angle up quite a bit, which, as you guys know, I'm not a huge fan of, but I do understand it for weight distribution and center of gravity, things like that. So um, it just looks really nice overall. They did a great job on this model. Um, I find it a little odd that it's part of the XL series and not part of the Discovery lineup. Uh, with not even Discovery listed on the box. To me that just seems a little bit odd. Because um, a lot of the Discovery ships are basically XL size anyway. So I don't know why this just wasn't put in the regular lineup. But So there it is. If it's on a lower shelf as it might be in your case, it looks absolutely awesome. There's really no complaints at all about that. Um, looks great, fantastic. Uh, if you put it on an eye level shelf, it's a little bit squat compared to the TOS Enterprise, but not a huge issue. Um, and looks good from different angles. Again, the stand's a little bulky.
Um, not a huge fan of the Eagle Moss stands. I wish I could find a way to put them in the bottom of the secondary hull or attached to the back of the ship. But from multiple angles on an eye level shelf, this thing looks cool. Now let me actually try that with the uh, with the stand. If I can see if I can. Because a lot of the enterprises, the other enterprises, you can kind of do something like that. This one not so much. It's too top heavy. But you, a lot of the other ones you can slip them in like that, which I prefer personally to being up here and kind of obscuring the secondary hull and everything. So there's that. Um, but we'll put it back like that. Now, if you put this thing on a higher shelf, again, this looks actually, actually great from, from down low. This is a really nice shaped and proportioned ship for any kind of down, down low viewing angle. Um, looks really good. There's its namesake there. <laughs> um, but... So yeah, um, looks great from a lot of different viewing angles. Um, really well done model. Uh, really captured the feel of the the TOS vibe. Again, more of a remastered TOS in my opinion, but that's just my opinion, and I have to I have to say it. I'm sorry, guys. So guys, uh, there you have it. The TOS or Discovery Era Enterprise, the Disco Prize as it's being called. Um, in all of its glory. If you guys are interested in picking this up as well as other ships from Eagle Moss, you can do so by clicking the link in the description below, heading over to Eagle Moss, and uh, adding stuff to the cart. Because there's a lot of cool stuff. You don't have to get a subscription, you can buy ships separately. Some ships, um, like this one, uh, uh, many of the XLs, if not all the XLs, plus some of the special ships, um, you can't use our discount. Um, if you do pick up the regular ships, you can use the discount code TREKYARDS at checkout to save yourself some money. But a lot of these ships, unfortunately, won't be included with that, with that discount code. Um, and the discount code does work in North America as well as Europe and the UK as well. Uh, for a while there, it wasn't working in Europe, which was just a mistake on Eagle Moss's part. But that has since been rectified, so guys, go and try and do that. Just use discount code TREKYARDS at checkout to save yourself some money. So, there you have it, guys. The Discovery Prize reviewed. I do not have the magazine yet. I might do another quick review of it when I get the magazine. We will see. Um, but until then, until next time, guys, please, as always, subscribe to the channel. And, uh, well, the channels, this one and the Captain Foley channel. And don't forget to check out other videos, reviews, whatever, by us. Because we got to do a lot of cool stuff here, have a lot of fun. And uh, we want you to join the fun. So see you soon, guys. This is Captain Foley signing off. Bye-bye.